Hello, trading is closed on February 14th, 2019. My last call said the pattern was negative, and unless we gapped and took these highs out early, lower prices should print, which they did. I said we didn't have to close negative, even though we should trade negative. We actually were positive until the final drop. We did close negative after all. We looked for the pattern with the early high and the late high. In general, it's a bullish pattern tends to rally into the close. When that doesn't happen, it's trouble. Well, it didn't happen, and after rallying all day long, we couldn't close over any of these highs or even these highs. So unless we invalidate it by gapping up and taking this high out early, the lower prices should print. Futures are down, but we do have a wall into the close, so the invalidation by gapping up is not impossible. If that doesn't happen, we could have big trouble here. And there's a case to be made that this high is going to hold and this up legs over. <clears throat> During the day, MJT identified all these moves as false, and they were. Here's bar 13 of a DeMarc sell signal. Ideally, you close over the high of this bar, but just trading over it's enough. These signals have failed a lot recently, but at least in terms of price, we have a signal. For there to be a collapse, you really have to take out this TDST line at 2448 within three bars. That's not going to happen. So even if we drop, this isn't a harbinger of a huge collapse, which I think will come later in the year if it comes at all. So we have the price. As far as time, I have the 14th. That's today. There's a day or two tolerance. Yesterday's within a day. So we have price. That is a signal. It doesn't always work, but there's a signal. We have time. It doesn't always work. There's a signal, though. Here's um, the leg we're trying to catch the end of. You take the high of early last year, ignore the false breakout, take a 78.6 uh, retracement from the high to the low, you get pretty much yesterday's highs. So in addition to time and price, you also have Fibonacci resistance. Now, of course, it doesn't have to stop at this Fibonacci level either, but at least you have a level. If that's the high, there is a count that works, but it's not the only count. If that's A, and that's B, and that's C, <coughs> C is equal to A at the high. That's really close enough for me. Of course, it isn't the only count, but if it's a high, at least you have a count that works. What's happened since then? <coughs> Well, this isn't my favorite count either. I think it's forced, and forced counts I don't always trust. But you do have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 5 equal to A, 5 equal to 1. Believe it or not, these do not overlap. And if that's 1, you have an ABC for 2. It doesn't break any rules, and if it's the right count, we're going to drop in the wave three down. So if we start to, to drop like a stone, I'd have to believe it. I'm certain that's not the only way to count it, but at least if we start dropping, there is a count that works too. So for tomorrow, the bulls <coughs> have quite a task in front of them. They have to recover from the down print in futures. They have to gap and take this high out and preferably this high out early. And if they can, I still have higher targets. But if they can't, and particularly if we start dropping, it's a very negative pattern. Failing to take out this high should lead to lower prices. And it wouldn't take much to convince me that this marked the end of the up leg. Now remember, this up leg ended about 100 points higher than the price at which the FOMC announcement was made. So if we get the standard whipsaw, which almost always works, 
you're talking about dropping 200 handles from this high and probably not taking a very long time to do it. So this has ominous implications for tomorrow and the weeks to come unless we can take this high and preferably these highs out early. And that's today's call.